Welcome to News Now with your host, Gil Christian Boyer. Today we have our lovely guest, uh, Ms. Kim Haley Jackson, the Vice Chair of the Belmont Human Rights Commission. Welcome. Thank you, Gil Chris, for having me. Great to see you. Um, and before we jump into it, um, how do you find yourself as a Vice Chair of the Human Rights Commission? How did you, um, how did you, tra- how did you transition from a, just a regular citizen um, into an active member of this commission? Um, so probably around two, three years ago, I wanted to get more involved in the community. Um, so part of that was driven by what was going on nationally. Um, also locally, I didn't really see a lot of people of color um, in leadership positions or on commissions. So I thought it would be a good idea to see what was available. Uh, Human Rights Commission was one of the groups that appealed to me the most. Um, So I applied and then this year, um, there was a change in leadership and I thought, let me throw my hat in the ring because there was, you know, as you know, there was a lot going on politically um, last, well, over the past five years really, (laughs) but kind of came to a head this year and, and thought I would step up into more of an active role. Yeah, and and I think you're right on uh, right on point. There has been a lot of going, a lot of things going on nationally, and even recently for Belmont. Um, and so with this new role for you, what does that mean in what what does your role look like now? What what does that mean in terms of uh, working within the community? Um, sure. So this is a bit of a lengthy answer. So um, initially, when we started, um, our or at least I will say my personal goals. Um, for the BHRC sort of shifted. So initially my first input, our first input with uh, leadership was to get more outreach in the community. So the Belmont Human Rights Commission assists everyone within the Belmont community, regardless of race, ethnicity, religion, um, you know, differently abled folks. We're here to support the community as a whole. if there is an issue that would arise of someone that happens in Belmont, whether or not they're a resident or Mm -hmm. they work within the community, um, they are always welcome to contact us, let us know if there has been a human rights violation put against them. So I I really didn't think that there was a lot of knowledge about that. So, you know, my first inclination was to um, increase our visibility, but particularly Gilchrist with, the Belmont students. Um, So full disclosure to everyone, um, Gilchrist is a graduate of 2020. Um, He graduated with my daughter. Um, I've had three children um, attend Belmont schools, two of whom have graduated and I currently have an eighth grader. But what I started to see was a lot of aggressions that were happening, you know, not only to my children, but other children of color within Belmont and it didn't really look like they had a lot of support. So what I wanted to do this year was bring attention to the BHRC and see how we can assist the school community. Yeah. However, <laughs> um, some of, and, and we've had like great input, um, you know, from some of the teachers at, you know, various levels, particularly Carla Coza at Chenery. We've been working with Um, Isaac Taylor at BHS and a group of wonderful students uh, from Belmont High School. So they have been wonderful in kind of getting the word out. Um, So at the beginning of this year, um, we saw the attack on the Capitol. We saw that insurrection and what the response looked like to that. Um, You know, so we, we put out a statement against it. We start to see some community feedback. And right after that, Uh, we had a couple of things happen. So uh, we had the murder of Henry Tapia, uh, Belmont father. Um, This happened right on Upland Road. This happened in our streets. So it kind of came home to Belmont. Um, These were not people who were multi-generational Belmontonians. Um, Nevertheless, like it it came to light. And, you know, my perspective on that, and I I said it at the vigil that was organized very quickly and and wonderfully by cause, um, community of solidarity, uh, excuse me, community of solidarity um, to say that Belmont, this is your problem too. And so we're bringing awareness to that. Yeah, and I actually would like to touch on that. um, On the surface, things look great, uh, but under the surface, we have a lot to work on. 
Yeah, and actually, I think that's an important point that you brought up. Um, and a, a point that's often missed in a town like Belmont, and uh, I was at the vigil that I was on uh, t- January 21st, and you know, you, re- you could really see the community come together, but a sentiment that was echoed across uh, from you and across you know, everyone there, it was Belmont, you too, right? This is not just, this has now been removed from you know, this, this tragic incident that happens in a different state, a different town, and now it's in Belmont, it's now here. Um, I, what are your thoughts on that sentiment and, and, and what does that mean for Belmontonians? What should they be, what type of um, you know, introspection should they be really doing right now? So I, I, I kind of want to go back and give a little bit of education on that. So it isn't that it's now here. Gilchrist, like it's been here. Um, before I came here, certainly before you came here, it's been here. I think what's important is that the town recognized because it's not happening to you does not mean it isn't happening. Um, it's time to listen to people of color. Um, you need to understand, like not everything is a major event, right? So, yeah. you know, things happen on a daily basis to people within the community. I think that the community at large does not think about. Um, so my suggestion would be to start to listen to what people are saying. Uh, we all don't have the same lived experience. So it's important, again, if it's not happening to you does not mean it does not exist. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's an important message for everyone listening because what that means is that these issues don't escalate or these, you know, these um, injustices don't escalate to what, what, what happened with, uh, with the tragic death of, uh, the, the tragic murder of Henry Tapia. It's, it can be kind of nubbed at the, at, at the root in a sense. What I would want the most is just like people to listen. You need to have uh, an open heart when you listen to other experiences that don't have anything to you. Um, you know, things happen to folks on a daily basis that are large and small, you know, um, and that's up to the town to figure out what sort of place does it want to be? Yeah. You know, I, I think that's, that's where we are. I've been struggling a little bit with, we just had the disappearance of Naya Brown, um, student at BHS. What did the community response look like to her disappearance? What does that mean for students of color? Do they feel comfortable knowing like pretty much that was to my, to me, and I'm not speaking on behalf of the family. I'm speaking as a black mother. Did not look like it was given the proper community response. She's a 15 year old child and she's gone. I felt like my community was silent. Yeah. So the community response to the disappearance of Naya Brown, Belmont High student um, was very disappointing to me. Um, it did not look like we had large community support around trying to find one of our own. I, I am not hesitant to say that I think that if the situation were different, if Naya looked different, that the community response would be <laughs> uh, overwhelming, let's say. Yeah. Um, at yeah. least atten- more attention would be called for it than a few Facebook posts um, a week later about a, a missing child in town. And, and that's a sad sentiment that's true, especially um, of a town like Belmont with how the demographics are, are broken down. But for the listener who's listening to this and they're saying, all right, I'm ready what do I do next? Um, I haven't been doing enough um, or I haven't been doing anything at all. What do I do next? And, and to that, what do you tell them? How, how do they get involved in a meaningful way? Not just, not just for status quo, but getting involved. Like, I'm doing real change or at least I'm, I'm pushing for real change. How, how is that done? Sure. Um, I think um, first I would say, listen to people of color who are trying to tell you Right. I I would not necessarily say, like, be offended. You can't be offended at someone's lived experience. So you need to listen. Uh, You need to learn how to um, 
change your mindset. Shall we say like, don't look at it as an attack, but like as, as a way to learn, right? Yeah. Um, the other thing would be, I'm more of an action person. So reading books is great, right? Everybody can pick up a book and read it, right? I mean, you've read a thousand books, right? Um, yeah. Before you start at college, you're gonna read a lot more. Yeah. That's great, right? You checked your box. But if you want real change, get involved. I would say, listen, <laughs> get involved locally, right? You have a lot of groups that are, are doing great things. Go on your website and say on the Belmont Town website, if there's a commission group that you're interested in running for when it, a seat becomes open, do that. You know, the Belmont Human Rights Commission accepts volunteers and working groups community of solidarity cause is growing. They're looking for volunteers. So there's always a way to volunteer um, in town. Yeah. Um, and I think you put that, you put that up the best way possible. It's action still is what matters, especially um, at a local level. And, and, and you preface that by, you have to listen. Um, and I think the best way for, for that is, again, as you mentioned, you cannot necessarily live, you cannot, um, you cannot live someone else's experience, but what you can is listen. And with what you listen and what with what you learn, besides the reading, reading is great. And I think everyone agrees with that. It's and uh, I really like that point. Action, action, get involved. Um, yeah, thank you, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Kim Haley Jackson, the vice chair of the Belmont Human Rights Commission. Um, any closing remarks before we end the show? Um, you know what? Close mouth, open ears. Uh, be willing to learn, um, you know, break the current narrative, get involved. I think that's it. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.